Hi, in this uh, uh, session I am going to continue uh, the diffraction of light and here I am going to study about diffraction of light by a small slit and diffraction of light by a small hole. Okay, let's start with diffraction of light by a slit. Here we are going to make experimental study and theoretical study. Diffraction of light by a slit. If you look at the title here, it is written Fraunhofer diffraction. There are two types of diffraction. You have Fraunhofer diffraction and you have Fresnel diffraction. We are responsible only about Fraunhofer diffraction and the Fresnel diffraction is beyond the scope of this uh, book. What is the difference between the two? In Fraunhofer diffraction, the distance between the slit and the screen is very large. Is large so that the rays coming out from the slit are considered to be parallel to themselves. Whereas in a Fresnel diffraction, the distance uh, is not far from the slit. And so we are related only to Fraunhofer diffraction. And the, from here comes the title, from Hofer diffraction, diffraction of light by a slit. And as I said, we are going to study uh, diffraction by a slit experimentally and theoretically. So let's start with the experimental study. Experimental. In the experimental study, I am going to let you uh, observe this video or watch this video. It's provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. In the next set of demonstrations, we're going to illustrate some of the very classic phenomena associated with the diffraction of light. I hope that there will be educational, but also a lot of fun to see these, these effects. We'll start first with the Fraunhofer diffraction, both in one dimension and two dimensions, and then we'll go to Fresnel diffraction. So let's start first with Fraunhofer diffraction associated with a single slit. The setup is over here. We have a helium neon laser, and here is the beam from the laser. We reflect it by this mirror here, and then we reflect it again by this mirror here onto, onto the slit. This, uh, this slit is a, uh, an adjustable slit. By turning this knob here, I can adjust the slit. But in order to see that indeed this is a slit, I'm going to put a screen over here so that when I adjust what the doors of the slit here, you can see that indeed I am. Okay. Notice here you have an adjustable slit. Notice this is the slit, vertical slit, as you see. When he uh, he can change the width of the slit by turning this uh, knob, okay? He put a screen uh, behind 
behind the slit so that you can see uh, the opening of the slit. Okay. Comparing the spacing between between the jaws. Of course, when it gets very small, mm. it's difficult to Notice see. Notice the spacing. So How here's does our it adjustable change? slit. Here's the laser beam going through the slit, and then the the diffracted light then falls on the screen over there, which is about 200 centimeters from uh, from the slit. So now we're ready to look at the so the, the distance light. is 200. So we have a close up then of the centimeter of the screen, we see the diffraction pattern for the slit separation that I have over here. Now, the wavelength of the light is uh, that of the helium neon laser, 6328 angstroms. So I gave you the separation between the slit and the screen, which is 200 centimeters. So now you should be able to calculate the slit width from the, from the diffraction pattern. Notice here, notice here, the slit is vertical. Look at the diffraction pattern, as you see. It is horizontal, okay? Also, he said that the wavelengths of the helium neon laser light used is lambda equal 63-28 angstrom and one angstrom is equal 10 minus 10 meter okay now, let's continue to do this calculation we have on the on the screen we have markers and the separation between these markers uh, is five centimeters. These are the markers. The distance between one marker and the other is five centimeters. I adjust the slit separation. So let me start with very narrow, very. Notice here. Slit where the central lobe. Notice as he changes the width of the slit, what happens here? The lengths. The, or the width of the spot of light, which is called the fringe, is increased or decreased. Okay? Is, can make it almost five centimeters or so, and you can see the other lobes. The distance is, he is saying that the distance is five centimeters. He measured it from the midpoint of this and the midpoint of this. Okay. Notice here, as he varies the width of the slit, the widths of the spot vary, which means that diffraction depends on the width of the slit. Okay. And then we'll start again. And Here the width is decreasing, so the length is increasing. Centimeters wide. And then I will now make the spacing. Whoops, I'll make the spacing wider. And you can see the central lobe now will get smaller and smaller. Smaller. Now he is increasing the width of the slit, so the spots are coming uh, together. They are trying to come to one spot. This is so high in the central lobe. We are, we are look sad. here. Look at the uh, slit. The width of the slit is increasing. Now he is decreasing the the width. Now that we've seen the, the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern associated okay. with a single So here, in addition to this given the distance between the slit and the screen is 200 centimeter and the wavelength of the laser light, which is monochromatic, is 63-28 angstrom with one angstrom equal he, he gave us in the video the length of the central bright fringe, okay? 
or a width of the central bright fringe. And ask you to calculate the width of the slit. Okay, you can take this as a small exercise after we finish the theoretical study. Now, in the experimental study, what do you have observed? Mm. Okay, what do we have observed here? You have observed on the screen alternating dark and bright spots that are called the fringes. This is the first observation. The second observation, if you measure the width of the central bright fringe here, and you measure the widths of the lateral fringes, you notice that the width of the central bright fringe is double though the widths of the lateral fringes. A third observation you notice is that when the slit is vertical, the diffraction pattern is horizontal. Notice here, in this uh, figure, the slit is horizontal, the diffraction pattern is vertical, okay? Which means that the direction of the slit and the direction of the diffraction pattern are orthogonal. In addition to this, you noted that as the width of the slit vary, the diffraction pattern width, uh, increases, diffraction increases or decreases according to the width of the slit. Notice here. This is the width of the slit that I am going to call it A, 0 0.18 millimeter. The length or the width of the central bright fringe is that much. Now, here, I increased A to 0 0.3 millimeter slit width. You notice here that the length of the central bright fringe is decreased and the fringes approach each other, which means that the diffraction has decreased. Also here, we increase the width of the slit to become 0 0.36. As you notice, the, uh, the fringes approach more to each other. So let's write these uh, observations. First, the diffraction pattern. Diffraction pattern. Consist. It consists of A, alternating, alternating dark, dark and the bright fringes. B, the width, the width of the central bright fringe is double those, double those of the lateral fringes, of the lateral fringes. 
lateral fringes, this is the central fringe, these are the lateral fringes. And, and the intensity of the central bright fringe, central bright fringe is very high, very high relative to those of, of the lateral fringes, lateral fringes. See the direction, the direction of the diffraction pattern of the diffraction pattern is orthogonal orthogonal to that of of the slit as we said if the slit is vertical the diffraction pattern is horizontal and if the slit is horizontal the diffraction pattern is vertical this is what i mean by orthogonal this is the first observation the second observation that you have seen as as the width a of the slit decreases diffraction increases okay and the reverse as a increases diffraction decreases okay let's take uh, questions here questions one the principle of of rectilinear propagation of light propagation of light isn't always applied justify this statement this statement as we said when light it passes light propagate in straight lines okay but when it passes through small slits or holes or strikes thin obstacles or thin edges what happens to it it deviates it deviates and it spreads to illuminate um, a more region than what expected so at the edges here of the slit the principle of rectilinear propagation of light is no more is applied and this is what is called diffraction notice here you have cylindrical beam you obtain here a divergent beam because of this diffraction and the bending at the edges and if you send a divergent beam from a point source of light toward the slit toward the slit the divergence increases okay because of the bending here so the rectilinear propagation of light is violated when light passes through thin holes etc this justified the statement okay <coughs> for reason, we can write here uh, the, uh, the principle of 
of rectilinear propagation of light, propagation of light is violated, is violated when light passes, when it passes through through small holes our slits or holes or when it strikes thin obstacles and edges thin obstacles and edges okay it bends it bends and it spreads okay let's take another question can we obtain can we obtain a ray in reality okay of course we cannot because as i said a ray can be in reality can be considered as a very thin laser beam and to obtain a very thin thin laser beam we should incident a laser beam to a very small hole or slit for example of which a equal one micrometer and if we do this if i send a laser beam towards very thin slit of this order you are not going to obtain a ray why because light diffracts and you obtain a divergent beam so the concept of ray is a theoretical concept only and in reality it cannot be obtained okay let's try the answer here to obtain a ray we should we should send a, a beam of light a beam of light towards very very thin oh very small very small slit or hole but doing this but doing this light diffracts and a ray cannot be obtained diffracts to give a divergent beam to give a divergent beam so a ray cannot be obtained so a ray cannot be obtained okay right. this was the experimental study now this result that i have uh, concluded experimentally i am going to prove them theoretically okay so here theoretical study
let's see this figure Allah. okay this figure is used for the theoretical study as you see here uh, this is the incident beam, this is the diffracted beam, it is divergent beam, and this is the zone, this is the diffraction pattern on the screen, okay? We are going to, to take this horizontal line or this ray enters with the center of the central bright fringe, okay? This line, this ray coming from, which is diffracted from the slit and reaches the screen, and the angle between these two theta is called the angle of diffraction. This angle of diffraction is used to determine the position of the bright and dark spots that are called the fringes on the screen. Okay, so the angular, angular position of, of dark fringes, dark fringes. The angular position of the dark fringes for the dark fringes only is given by sine theta equal k lambda over a. Okay? As we said, the theta is this one. The angle of diffraction theta is the angle of diffraction lambda is the wavelength the wave length of of the monochromatic light used of the monochromatic light used will A is the width the width of the slit of the slit will K is the order of the fringe the order the K takes value Okay, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, etc. Yani k belong to z, to z. Okay, lambda and a should have same unit. Well, k is an integer which is unitless. You, so you get sine theta is unitless. I am going to draw the diffraction pattern that I am going to use here. As you see here, the slit is horizontal. This is horizontal slit and the diffraction pattern is vertical. I am going to draw them. You have here, this is the screen. And you have here, this is the slit. And this is the laser beam, okay? This is the laser beam. I'm going to continue this horizontal line. It reaches point O, which is the center of the central bright fringe. This is the center of the central 
bright the fringe it is here and this is the bright uh, the central bright fringe then you obtain dark fringe alternating dark and the bright fringe this is dark fringe then you have here bright fringe dark fringe bright fringe dark fringe then the bright fringe okay similarly below here as you notice that the fraction pattern is symmetric with respect to O, the center of the central bright fringe. Let's take some positions. If K equal 1 or plus 1, you get sine theta 1. Sine theta 1 is equal lambda over A. This is the first the first dark fringe okay if k equal plus minus 2 you get sine theta 2 this plus minus you get here plus minus 2 lambda over a this is second dark fringe if you take k equal plus minus 3 this implies sine theta is equal plus minus 3 lambda over A, which is third dark fringe, and so on. Notice here the first proof here. Notice the angle of diffraction varies with A. A is in the denominator. If A decreases sine theta increases theta increases the diffraction increases and the reverse so this is the first the first the experimental result which is related to the width of the slit is proved here theoretically this for you are not responsible about the derivation of this formula okay now let us uh, indicate the positions of the dark fringes on the screen. To do this, I am going to choose an axis, call it sine theta axis. If I do this, then plus minus lambda over A, 2 lambda over A, 3 lambda over A, become abscesses of origin O. Yani, I change the screen to sine theta axis. As you did in the trigonometric circle, the trigonometric circle, you change the x-axis to cosine alpha axis and the y-axis to sine alpha axis. So I changed I have chosen on the screen a sine theta axis. When I do this, I can indicate the positions of the fringes on the screen. The first one, plus minus, plus minus, this is the first dark fringe of order k equal plus one, first dark. Also, you have here k equal minus 1, which is also first dark. The second dark, plus minus 2 lambda over a, which means that here k is equal plus 2, gives me the second dark fringe. And here k equal minus 2 also second dark fringe the third one plus 3 this is k plus 3 
sir, dark friend, and here also K okay, minus three, sir, dark friend, okay, and the positions, if you choose line from the slit which is considered as a point because it is a small to the first dark this is angle theta one okay if you know the angle for example two degree if you know theta one is two degree for example you start from the horizontal position which is the origin of the angle and you move two degree and continue, you reach the first dark. If the second dark, for example, is a three degree, you move from the horizontal three degree and you reach the position of the second dark fringe. So this is theta two. Theta two and so on. Similarly, theta three is from the slit to the third this is theta three okay but sometimes we want to work with the small angles for small angles okay this is an enlarged figure to this one okay so that you can see better. Now, sometimes the angle is a small for a small, for small angle of diffraction. I mean by a small angle, yani theta less than or equal 10 degree or theta less than or equal 0 0.174 radian. 10 degree correspond to 0 0.174 radian. In this case, you have an approximation formula. Sine theta is approximately equal to theta in radian. And the formula becomes theta radian is equal is approximately equal k lambda over a where k belong to z star okay sorry here no zero k minus one minus two minus one one two k belong to z star okay so you have the formula here, yani k equal minus two, minus one, one, two, etc. Okay, so k zero, k zero is not included. Time. Now, the angular width of the central bright fringe, the angular the angular width of of the central of the central bright fringe look here this is the width of the central bright fringe i am going to call it capital l okay the angle facing this width is called angular width. So, I am going to draw a line to the, this angle that faces L, this one, between these two rays, coming from the slit to first dark, and from the slit to first dark, this angle facing L, is called angular width and I am going to call it alpha. So as you see, if this is theta one, this will be theta one prime. 
theta one is positive, theta one prime is negative and of same magnitude. Alpha, alpha is equal to theta one plus absolute value of theta one prime because it is width. Well, absolute value of theta prime is equal in magnitude to theta one, so alpha equal to theta one. So to find the angular width, I should find theta one. If the angle is large, I put k one, I use this formula. For example, for any angle, for any, for angle theta, any angle theta, whether large or small, I can find, put k equal 1, I get sine theta 1 is equal lambda over a, then I make shift sign minus 1 lambda over a, I get theta 1 and I multiply it by 2, I get the angular width. Here you cannot obtain a clear formula because there is sine minus one. But observe for a small angle, for small angle theta, we can use this formula and theta one will be approximately equal k equal one. Theta 1 will be approximately equal lambda over A, which means that alpha is equal to lambda over A. This is the angular width alpha of the uh, central bright fringe. Now, let's prove that the angular width of the central bright fringe is double the angular widths of the lateral fringes in order to verify the experimental result theoretically. Okay? Type. And I am going to use small angles because we can get a clear formula to compare. Type. If I take this is the first bright fringe. First bright fringe. It is bounded between first dark and second dark fringe. If I want to find its angular width, its angular width is the angle facing this width. Okay? If this width, I call it L1, L1, this angle facing L1 is called alpha 1. Alpha 1, what is it equal to? Look here, it is theta 2 minus theta 1, okay? So, the angular width of the first, the angular width of the first bright fringe a bright fringe is alpha 1 equal, as we said, it is equal theta 2 minus theta 1. I have theta 1, okay, theta 2 k equal to, this implied theta 2 equal 2 lambda over a, yani this implies alpha 1 equal to lambda over a minus lambda over a, you get lambda over a. Similarly, if I want to find the angular width of the second bright fringe, this is the central, this is the first, this is the second bright fringe. Also, I am going to call its width is L2, then the angle facing it is alpha 2. What is alpha 2? Similarly, look carefully at the figure. Theta 2 is theta 3 minus theta 2. So, 
I write here the alpha 2 is theta 3 minus theta 2 will k equal 3 يعني theta 3 equal 3 lambda over a this implies alpha equal 3 lambda over a minus 2 lambda over a and you get lambda over a similarly for alpha 3 which is theta 4 minus theta 3 and you get also lambda over a so what do you deduce you you deduce that the lateral fringes have same width okay alpha 1 equal alpha 2 equal alpha 3 equal etc equal lambda over a for isn't lateral fringes have the same width is or the same width if I compare it with the central bright fringe look here alpha equal to lambda over a alpha equal to lambda over a lambda over a is the letter is the lateral angular width is yani this implies I get alpha equal to alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to alpha 3 equal etc so I have proved the experimental result that the width of the central bright fringe width of the central bright fringe is double those double those of of the lateral of the lateral fringes of course here if i prove that alpha the angular width is alpha equal to alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 of course the width is l will be equal to l1 equal to l2 and so on so this result is approved okay notice here also also i am although i am talking about the bright fringes okay of the lateral fringes lateral bright fringes okay hey the first the first bright hey the second the second bright this is the third bright okay and so on take this remark only although i am talking about bright fringes i have obtained the result of the angular widths of the bright fringes by using the equation of the dark fringes okay why because each bright fringe is bounded by two dark fringes each one so i used the formula of the dark fringes to find the lateral widths of the bright fringes take care about this now how to determine the position of the bright fringes okay Now, for a small angle, Elna, sine theta becomes theta in radian. Don't forget. Look here. How do I determine the position of the bright fringes? The positions of the bright fringes are determined by their center because they have dimension. This is the center of the first one center of the second center of the third this is the center of the first bright okay so 
as you see here, if theta bright of the central bright is zero, because it is along this line, horizontal line. So let's write here, the angular position, the angular positions of, of the bright fringes, of the bright fringes. So as we said, we determine their positions by their centers because they are, have dimension and not like the dark fringes, they look like a spot. So deter to determine the bright fringes, I am going to erase here because Okay, this is the center of the first bright. So I draw a line from the slit, which represent a ray from the slit reaching this point. This is called, I'm going to call it set B1. Okay, so from this position here, the central bright fringe, central, central bright fringe يعني عند angle set central bright is equal to zero okay the first bright how to determine it look here this is a set axis and this point is the midpoint of these two points and as you know, the midpoint, you find the abscissa of the midpoint by using x equal x1 plus x2 over 2. So I can use this fact. This is like in geometry. This is sine theta axis. And these are two abscissas. And this is at the midpoint. So first, first bright fringe, okay? Yani, this implies I can write sine theta one bright is equal sine theta two bright sine theta two bright plus sine theta one bright over two which means that K2 yani Two lambda over a plus one lambda over a over two gives you three lambda over two a. Okay? Don't forget the plus or minus because there is one below plus or minus. So you have here this is First, the bright fringe, its position is 3 lambda over A, and you have here minus 3 lambda over 2A over 2A. Okay? Second, the bright fringe, similarly, second, a bright fringe. Okay, yani. Second bright fringe, it is the midpoint of uh, third dark and second dark. So I can write sine, sine theta two bright is equal sine theta three dark plus sine theta 2 dark over 2. Sorry, honey. Theta 2 dark, theta 1 dark. So I write here 3 lambda over A plus 2 lambda over A over 2 gives you 5 lambda over 2A plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. So this is the third dark here 
first bright, second bright, it is given by 5 lambda over 2a and here minus 5 lambda over 2a. So now you can conclude the position of the third bright directly. Look here, 3 third, third bright. Look here, you have sine theta 1, sine theta 2. Here I write sine theta 3 bright. It is equal. Notice here, plus minus, you have a 3, 5 odd numbers. So you deduce this one to be 7. You have lambda, lambda over 2a. So I deduce it. Faizan, this one is 3 lambda over 2a and this one minus, uh, sorry, 7 lambda over 2a and this is minus 7 lambda over 2a and if the angle is a small for small angle I can write sine theta bright approximately equal to theta bright in radian and you get the same result theta k1 gives you sine theta 1 is plus minus 3 lambda over 2a will k sorry on first bright here you have second a bright theta 2 bright equal plus minus 5 lambda over 2a and third bright etc is equal theta 3 bright is equal to plus minus 7 lambda over 2a etc okay